Um, and you would think at that point they would have said, let's get some variety in here. Let's protect ourselves and let's not put all our bananas in one basket. Let's find out sure. ways to deliver other kinds of bananas. It's possible. But they didn't. And they were warned. And somebody <laughs> said, you know, you're relying on Cavendish and uh, that's going to come up and bite you in the butt one day. And sure enough, in 1989, um, you know, Chiquita and Dole are cruising along with their 50-50 split of the market. And a version of Panama disease, because Cavendish is resistant to Panama disease. That's the main reason it's adopted. Mm -hmm. bananas, bananas are sort of like identical cousins. That's the best way to put them. All bananas are really closely related. All bananas get sick. But not all bananas get sick from the same thing. It's sort of like those old Venn diagrams, like eight you know, 85 different kinds of bananas might get this particular disease, but six might not. So the Cavendish didn't get Panama disease, but then Panama disease mutates or a new form emerges or is found um, in Malaysia. Most likely it was lurking in the soil with no bananas to prey on. And they start growing bananas. They start growing Cavendish. Now, why do they grow Cavendish in Malaysia, which is a banana rich place? Asia has dozens of kinds. It's because people are moving to cities and they don't have those village bananas that they grew up with. You know, if you go to a small mm -hmm. village in Vietnam or something like that, you'll see a banana tree in the, in the front yard. It, it's not going to be a Cavendish tree for sure, but it's a tree that, that provides subsistence um, for that family. And it provides trade and commerce because, you know, bananas grow fruit once a year. So, like, if you're my next door neighbor in Vietnam, your tree might fruit in March. And you can't eat all 200 bananas, you know, in the next week. My, mm -hmm. my fruit in July. So we're constantly trading with each other, helping each other. Um, right. But as people move to cities, this goes away. And they, but they still want bananas because everyone loves bananas. Well, what banana is it that can withstand a long truck ride from these plantations? It's Cavendish. So mm -hmm. Cavendish not only gets sick, Panama disease doesn't only hit it, but it starts displacing rare bananas, important bananas. So in India, for example, you see, and I'm going to sort of make up these numbers because I don't have them in hand, but you see Cavendish going from 5 to 10% of the total banana crop there to 60%. And then suddenly Cavendish gets sick. Um, and this disease, Panama disease, you know, the, the banana companies know what it is. It's wiped them out before. But what do they do? Nothing. They do nothing. And they, what they say is, you know, and I'm, begin, I'm beginning to work on my book about 10 years later. They say, oh, well, it's not a problem. It's just a Malaysia thing. If it is a problem, it won't happen now. And when it does happen, we'll be able to figure it out. Well, Jeez. if you look at the map of the spread of Panama disease, um, it's hopped over oceans. It's now found in, in, you know, from Malaysia. It's found in mainland Asia, in Pakistan, in India in the Philippines, um, it's found in Australia, it's found in Africa. Um, and when my book came out, you know, people would always ask me for a prediction because what I would say is, you know, most of our bananas, all of our bananas come from Latin America where Panama disease has not been seen. Mm -hmm. And the banana industry, you know, I remember the CEO of Chiquita telling his stockholders at one point, um, well, it's never gonna jump that ocean to Latin America. You know, even though it jumped from the Philippines to Australia, which is like, pretty far um and and we don't have to worry about this it's never going to hit latin america my book came out and i said well i'm not going to make a prediction but if i was forced to i would say we'll see it in latin america in 10 to 20 years exactly 13 years after or, or exactly 10 years after my book came out it appeared in latin america um, wow. so now panama disease is in colombia and it's probably in other countries too but they keep it quiet Mm. Um, and so this very same thing that wiped out the banana has now come home and it is a huge threat to our banana crop. And the question is, what is going to be done about it? Yeah. And that's a good question because there's <laughs> no simple answer. And the answers that I think are mostly being offered are not good answers. Mm. So, um, and if you want me to tell you what's, what's being done about it, what I think should be done about it, I'm happy to do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's dive into it. Cause that's, I mean, I'm so curious about what, 
are, are we just going to repeat history, or what can be done? Well, let's break it. Let's break the series, the solution sets into two simple camps, opposing camps. One is Gromichel went. Hey, thanks for watching this video. This is my dog Murphy, and these are dog treats. Now I'll give Murphy one of these dog treats, and all you have to do is press the like button. Just press that little like button right down there at the bottom of this video, and this sweet, adorable, cute little puppy gets a treat. All thanks to you. All right, you did it? Okay, I believe you. You said you did it. There you go, Murph. She got that treat because of you. Now, I'll eat one of these treats, and all you have to do is click that subscribe button right there, pointing to it. Just click that subscribe button, subscribe to Curiosityness with me, Travis DeRose. Get lots of good video, and I'll eat this treat. All right, you did that too? That's not very good. Bro, not very good.